this is one of those, I know a ton of other people have already talked about this, but I too have a microphone. So here we go. Salutations friends, my name is Brianna C. Gilman Bond, otherwise known as No Ordinary Scholar, and this concept has been going around quite a lot. What we're talking about here is a thing that readers, book talkers, and especially white folks will say when they read a book, a story written by a marginalized group, and it's that that book was very educational. Again, we've heard a lot of people talk about this type of thing a lot, and I, I just, I've just now finally been able to put two words, what about it bothers me? Because I've, I've been thinking about this for a hot minute. A thing that is often addressed with this is the burden that saying something like this puts on marginalized writers. Often each of these writers has to be an expert in their own identity, culture, etc. and the experiences of these people, which is impossible because the experiences of these marginalized identities are not identical, they're not universal. And so because you're put in a position where you're competing to be the most accurate black story or the most accurate lesbian story, when someone reads that expecting it to be the pinnacle of a lesbian story, the pinnacle of a black story, an Asian story, etc., people of those identities will read that and say, no, it's not. This isn't, this isn't how I experience it. And it is a battle for validation. Is it worthy if it isn't the one true experience But when there, there just isn't one? And it just, it creates an extremely absurdly high standard for marginalized writers. And it creates a lot of animosity amongst these marginalized communities because it feels like we're all fighting for that one spot to be the one accurate depiction that everyone looks to instead of just allowing it to be a plethora, a spectrum of experiences that we can engage with. That is what people typically talk about with this topic. A thing I want to get into addressing is how othering this whole concept is because, come here. Stop hitting them, stop hitting the thing. No. Please you. Okay. Conti we're gonna continue as if this, this didn't happen. We're gonna continue as if this didn't happen, as if my other cats are causing a ruckus. We'll do this, we got this, we got this. Okay. The whole concept of saying this is extremely othering. This depends on the idea that universally this is new information, this is odd, this is out of the ordinary information. To label it as something that everyone can learn from is to label it as something that no one understands, is to label it as an alien experience to everyone. And describing that way enhances really that feeling that no one understands what you're going through. And it really kind of goes against the concept and the reason why we keep shouting and screaming for representation. It's we want representation to show individuals, hey, your experience is normal, your experience is out there, there are other people just like you. By saying this thing, by making it the tagline, by making it the main reason why you think people should read it, is to reinforce this idea, this loneliness of these identities. It also minimizes and reduces these experiences that people have and that many people have because it is not of that dominant culture. And so we are minimizing it as in a foreign, an alien, an abnormal experience, which then reinforces that dominant culture as being the normal. And another thing people have, do generally talk about is when you're trying to put marginalized stories in these boxes of educational, you limit what stories marginalized authors are allowed to tell and you limit and you limit the spaces that these books and these stories can fill yes in some stories there are lessons that can be learned but often specifically teaching someone about a culture is not the lesson that 
the author's going for. And I said this before a couple months ago on Twitter, that the issue isn't labeling a story as South Asian or Desi or queer, etc. The issue is that people who aren't of these cultures and especially white people don't know how to engage with a story that's not made for them because yes it's very possible for a story to be written with a specific intended audience in mind and sometimes it can be people that relate to the cultural aspects of the story but if the main story is about friendship or family or love and romance those are things that you can relate to outside of the culture you're not the main audience for it it is possible to look at a story that is not made for you made about you made with you in mind and pick and choose the pieces that you can relate to and just take in the stuff that you can't you know how i know that because that's what all the marginalized fucking people did before the last te what decade because that's the issue because at the end of the day when you straddle books with these labels like educational, that affects how people are going to perceive the book, what mind space they want to be in when they get into the book, and that's going to affect what the recommendation means. The problem is, this has nothing to do with the book. And I don't know if I've seen someone discuss this specifically, but when someone calls the book educational, the reason you do that is because you are trying to describe the book with relation to how it centers whiteness because the book itself is not centered around whiteness in order to put whiteness at the center you have to find how it relates to it and that relationship you chose is a service to whiteness to educate and if that at all sounds familiar to how some white people react to the concept of learning about racism bigotry and the insistence on it being taught to them and being provided to them instead of going out and getting that information themselves here you go i think it's also very similar to the way a lot of white people especially white women have tried to distance themselves from the ways that they've upheld oppression by taking a book that is just discussing or about or related to another culture that you're not a part of and labeling it and portraying it as a universal unknown you distance yourself from lack of diversity in your own environment you distance yourself from your own ignorance and all of the negative connotations that go along with being ignorant and you distance yourself from harm you've perpetuated in your ignorance. An example I think of is a book talk video where some white woman is reading a book in which someone has, I believe, Hindi in the text. And she puts these Hindi words in the background is playing Sims gibberish. It's like, this is what I feel like whenever I see these words in the book. That is a video playing to the idea that this is all that it is gibberish instead of real words that it is universally unknown that it is abnormal but this is ignorance this is harm you are perpetuating with your ignorance but by treating it like it is a universal thing that blame is not specifically on your shoulders that is not harm you are doing that is oh nobody knew so how could any, how could I have been better? All being said, I know, as I said at the beginning, a lot of other people have been saying a lot of other things about this concept. Please go ahead and check out other people's videos, TikToks, etc. But I, you know, I had one and a half cents to add to the discussion. And hey, it's never too little to make change. Uh, I'm going down, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed that there video please subscribe to this channel please check out my q video where i talk about disabled autonomy and how that is stolen because uh, that video should be linked i believe up in this corner if you like to read please check out my books the queen of thieves series available right now 
highly, highly recommend. Links are down below for everything, really. If you want to see me goofing around, if you want to see more of my kitons, uh, go check out my vlog channel over there. We're hanging out. We're moving. And we goof. We goof. We gab. It's a whole, it's a whole vibe over there. But if you also have like five dollars burning a hole in your pocket and you want to know how you can support me, I do have a Patreon over there. You can support me for as little as two dollars a month. But once you hit the like five dollars a month, things start getting juicy. You can get the pre-release premieres of all of my books where I'll give you a chapter a week alongside some behind the scenes until the actual release date of the book, which I think is, I think it's pretty cool. I think I had a lot of fun with it. We can do that. You can get some of my YouTube videos early and we get to chat. I think I'm a fun chatter. I'm, I'm a very chatty chatter. If any of that sounds good to you, check out all the links down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, Alanation's friends. <laughs>